What's up, everybody? Welcome to uh, episode. This is the third episode of Nate Land. We're we're on to something. Uh, <laughs> we're rolling. I uh, thank you for everybody. You know, this is the first podcast we've done where we've actually the episodes have been out. Uh, we've seen how you know the response, and I mean it's been good. You know. We it's everybody's been positive, I think, right? Like, uh, so thank you for everybody that's been watching, and everybody's been, everybody gets that we're, you know, I, I imagine beginning of every podcast is uh, to you got to figure out what you're doing, the system, how we're going to do it, and uh, I think we're figuring out. We've kind of stumbled on an idea, like it's almost like the theme of a podcast. You know, it's tough to. Because it's like, what are you going to do? Like, there's interviews, there's whatever. And then, so we have a, a new formula that we're trying this time. And it's it's Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a new, I like, we have a, so we have a lot of papers. I like papers. I'm a fan. You really feel like you're getting something done. Yeah. It you feels know. like, you know, when you stack them, it feels nice. Uh, we have this new sticker that we put on the table. See if that we just try stuff. Yeah, we just put stuff out there, man, and see if it works. You know, mm-hmm. we knows? met a fan yesterday. You met a fan. We did. We did. Remember when we were at lunch and the guy, came, hey, listen to the podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. Where was? It? Oh yes, the guy we met yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm not a big. I don't like talking to the fans <laughs> out in the public. No. <laughs> yeah, very nice guy. Yeah. Uh, Didn't know my name, but yeah, he called him Matt. He called Brian Matt. <laughs> So Nate goes, and Matt? Yeah. Wasn't sure and uh, went with Matt. And so I don't feel like you look like a Matt. And, uh, I was he's like, say, he's, that's a pretty good guess. He said, uh, a bad guess. He said, I don't know why I thought your name was Matt. And Nate said, well, we got an Aaron. He said, oh, yeah, I know Aaron. I love Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but his name was Ben. I know him. But then when he left, he's like, what was your name one more time? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I should have said Worf. He was very Worf. nice. See if he's a real fan of the, you know, <laughs> does he dive deep? Like, did you go back to episode one? Yeah. You one of those real fans? <laughs> like, <laughs> are you just a new guy that shot, showed up at episode two? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, he, yeah, he was very nice. And uh, what's Satco? Uh, San Antonio Taco. They have out, outdoor eating. Yeah, spread out. Uh, spread out. And I'm a huge San Antonio Taco fan. Really? Yeah, I'm a, it's my favorite. I would go. We'd always go to after Vandy uh, football games because it's right by the games. campus there, right? Yeah, I used to work right around the corner from there. We'd go there for lunch all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. Where'd you work at? On Music Row. Oh, yeah. Just like yeah. doing music stuff. Just doing big. <laughs> it's very vague. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, Music Row. I worked, yeah. I, worked, I worked in a company that had nothing to do with music, but we were on Music Row. So would y'all make everybody furious that y'all were on Music Row? Well, we would get. This is true. Like once a week, somebody would walk in thinking. We were a music place. Yeah. And like some guy would show up. He's like, I'm from Texas. This is my CD. Like I drove all the way here trying to yeah. make it. They would. <laughs> He's already off to the wrong start. Exactly. Like, yeah. I guess he just thinks you just walk in random places and give them your music. Yeah. And we would take it. We'd be like, all right, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. We had nothing to do with music. Yeah. But that, what was the company called? It was called 16 Digital. It was a. I mean. Oh, uh, I'd believe that. Then. Yeah. I would think that's. And what, uh, what did y'all do? We were a social media company. Oh. Yeah. All right. But yeah. if you just think Music Row, they're all studios. You know, yeah. They'll just show up and yeah. somebody will buy them. I mean, it's got to be all day long. Those guys are just, and people are driving in, just going mm-hmm. like, this is my dream. Yeah. I, I typed in, you know, I'm from, I drove from Texas, mm-hmm. typed in Music Row. Yeah. And then just drove. Which nope. one of these looks like a 16 digital? <laughs> that sounds like the place I need to be. The guy's like, I'll go there because that's, Positively music, yeah. and then I'll the other ones I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, my dentist is on music. I think it's Music Row. I don't know. <laughs> I never know. I got another thing that I go there. I went. I still give them my CD uh, when I go in. There was I. There's a, they have a music thing at, in, in like across the hall from them, from the dentist, and uh, they do. Uh, I saw I saw people in there yesterday talking about music. And I thought about it. I think I can write a song. I think it, I, and I think it's super insult. I'm not trying to be insulting to the music writers, but it I is. I think, but it can be. As comedians, we write jokes. <laughs> 
We're writers. I've written shows. I've written like I know how to write. So like, why could we not write a song? A, a song is a story, right? Like that's the all. lyrics to a song. You said yeah. you could write the lyrics. The lyrics that I don't listen to. I'm yeah. not. I, I'm not saying I'm good. But so that's what even makes me think I could do it even more. The I think I could write the lyrics. I think I could write a song. But not no musical element to it. Just the lyrics. I, I can't sing. I played okay. the trumpet when I was in seventh grade, so I might throw some trumpet in there. <laughs> I might, whatever, when I would give my song to people, I would just be like, there's just one thing, mm-hmm. I would like a little trumpet. And then I would see, and they'd be like, oh, I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, that, that would be the deal breaker yeah. for them, is that I would be like, I played trumpet very briefly, and don't even really care about the trumpet. You know why I played the trumpet? I wanted to play the saxophone. Saxophone, when I was in high school, saxophone was the instrument. It was the one to do. It was so cool. But it was expensive, and my parents couldn't afford it, so they could only afford a trumpet. And then they got all their friend. Then we had a friend that played the trumpet, and they had him come give me a big talk about how the- cool the trumpet is. <laughs> so like, they're just trying to trick me into being like, he's like, I played the trumpet, and it was, I mean, it was a cool. And, and I was like, yeah, maybe it was cool. Like, and the saxophone was cool, but my parents couldn't afford it. So why was the saxophone cool? Is that when Bill Clinton was playing it? Yeah, it would have been. Uh, yeah, it would have been nineties. Like so, I mean, get on Arsenio. Seventh yeah, grade. Exactly. Yeah, saxophone was just cool. It was. It it's was, still pretty cool. Saxophone's still yeah. pretty cool. Trumpet's up there now. Trumpet's cool. What mm-hmm. do you play? I played the xylophone in high school. Well, I know, but you play a lot of instruments, don't you? The drums, guitar, piano. So if he wrote the lyrics, you could put the music together. He can't be that good. I, I feel like I've never heard him play. I, mean, I think we got something right here. I know, but I've never heard him play. Well, I've never heard you write a poem. But you know? I have written jokes. That's true. And then, yeah. but now that you're like, well, I can play everything. You seem like a, like that makes me worry that I'm not great at anything. I'm okay. pretty good at a lot of different stuff. Well, really? he's a great songwriter. So I'm yeah. a great songwriter. You've never written a joke that rhymed. <laughs> I mean, the dead horse joke is is a is a beautiful. That'd be a beautiful song. Yeah, it's iambic it's pentameter. Yeah. It's written in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, it might maybe be the new song for this uh, this show. Be just you. You write a theme song for it. No, I'm just saying maybe we have you. You do you do all your you do a little okay. bit of everything. You get a couple. Do you have all those in, the instruments at your house? I don't house? have a xylophone at the house. <laughs> do you have I've, everything else. I've got we've got a guitar. Did and you a bell keyboard. on the xylophone? I never got good at the xylophone because you could never. I could never practice at home. I don't know. How, like, who has a xylophone? In is that their house? The, what is a xylophone? The thing. Yeah, it was technically a marimba, where it's just wooden block. It's like oh, a piano, marimba. but you hit it with Burma. He's got a joke about it. It's a prop comic. He plays it on his phone. You bring it out. <laughs> not a, not a, <laughs> have you ever? Have you ever done it on stage? No. Ah, do you want to? If I had a no, I wouldn't. But yeah, I've never done a show where a xylophone is around. Yeah. But if some, if you walked in, I've done shows. I mean, I've done a show at a high school where they would have all this stuff. If they had a trumpet nearby, would you pull it out? No, nah, I couldn't do the yeah. trumpet now. Like, uh, I, I mean, I could barely do it in seventh grade. Uh-huh. But if they were like, we need a songwriter, anybody? Would you like? <laughs> yeah. I I'm a marine it. biologist. I would say I could be a songwriter. <laughs> I would be like, I think if they needed a songwriter immediately and there's no songwriters, I think I would be in big demand as at least being a writer. I've written. I would tell them that. <laughs> I've written stuff before. That's what I would stand up. Hello. I've wrote things in the past. And they would be like, oh, that's good enough. And then I would go up there and I would just do my act. I would just just do like... Trying to sing it? I would just do like a Tonight Show set, like a five minute. I would find a five... Which the dead horse story is five minutes long. I did it all all in one Tonight Show. So that's, a, I mean, how long is a song? Four three, and a half minutes. Three and a half minutes. So I cut some stuff out, <laughs> yeah, throw some rhymes fat. in. Yeah. I, dead horse, I say divorce and dead horse. <laughs> Those rhyme in the thing. I mean, I don't know how this is not going to be one. a song. There's one. Yeah. There's one rhyme. Yeah. It's a journey. Uh, all right. Uh, so... Uh, one thing we, we we did watch something, and uh, it's we all watched. I don't know if anybody's if, if people at home have seen the the perfect bid, uh, the price. It's it's on. I think it's on Netflix or no. YouTube. It's on. It's on YouTube and Amazon YouTube Prime and Amazon Prime, and two sponsors. No, <laughs> we get big sponsors. Uh, Amazon Prime is our 
sponsor of this show. Uh, we so the perfect bit is a great documentary about. I think it's on Netflix too. The, it's a great documentary about a guy uh, that was a Price Was Right contestant, and they thought he was cheating because he knew all the prices. He just like was a guy because you know when you watch that show when you watch <clears throat> Price Is Right, I mean it's like a can of beans. How much is it? And then you know it's like I mean you think people would be great at it, or like how much a couch is or something. But they're not. But this guy was like a photogenic, <laughs> right? Is that photogenic? Well, he was just... No, wait. Is that how you say that? Photographic. No, what do you yeah. say? <laughs> yeah, he was very photogenic. This he guy was, very, was a looker. Yeah, photogenic's not he it. He was not I mean, that photogenic, but no. yeah, I want to throw that out. What's the, when the memory thing? A photographic memory? Photographic memory. There you go. Photogenic memory. Yeah. This guy was not photogenic, so therefore he had a yeah. lot of free time to <laughs> memorize uh, prices, and he kept it like a spreadsheet. Yeah, uh, and he just memorized them all, and then he caused a lot of trouble for them. He wasn't doing anything illegally; um, just was too good at his job, basically. That's how I look at like counting cards with casinos. Yeah, like that where they get mad. Like it's not illegal. I've always thought that. Yeah, why is yeah. why is I'm just too I'm just good yeah. at the game. Yeah, I don't know. They don't like it. And it's it's like you've created a system. It's a it's a pro it's a problem for these casinos, but like I don't like why don't like why couldn't you just go in and go I am counting cards, in my head I'm not touching the cards yeah. I'm just counting them, and what are you gonna do? I feel like if you walked into a casino and had like a camera crew with you, like you know and you're like we're gonna I'm counting cards and I'm gonna do it, yeah, and it's not illegal, and then like just see what they do, you know. As you get murdered, but I, casinos maybe still do that. Take people in back rooms, and I, I don't bet know if they that do. really goes on. But I don't know. I mean, yeah, now would be the perfect time to do it because you can't do stuff like that. That's how. I bet they still do it though. What? I bet you got to go to the right casino. Yeah, you're gonna go to some casino down the down the way down the strip mm-hmm. at the other end. You don't go count cards there. They're like, yeah, we still do that stuff. <laughs> We're old you got to go to MGM, mm-hmm. the win, like go to a nice one that's like, we can't afford to do this to you. But yeah, I never understood why don't they let them. Like, why is it not? Like, just, just say it. It's almost like being sneaky is the problem with it. Versus if you walked in and go, I am counting these cards. I'm doing something legal. I agree. I'm, I'm going to do it. You think they'd be fine with it if you were just up front? And I'm saying like, it gives you a better chance than being when you're sneaky is when they go, uh, What well, are you what else are you doing? But if you just come in and go, I'm a I'm a card counter and that's what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna see if I can beat the game by counting like how's that not a strategy? You just tell the dealer when you sit down, just <laughs> yeah. letting you know I'm just counting. Heads up. How you doing everybody? I'm <laughs> counting cards. You go a little slower than normal. I yeah. appreciate it. I'm new. I'm new. Yeah. <laughs> it's my it's first, first time, time we'll try this. First time we'll try. Are you good at it? I don't know. We're gonna find out. And then you hang on, what was that before you throw it back? Yeah. What was that? Oh, that's cool. But this the, the price is right guy. It, it couldn't happen now, right? Because he he back in the day, because you know, once something aired on television, it didn't air again for a week. They would reuse prizes on the prices, right? And they don't do that anymore because of this guy. Yeah. Right? Wasn't that part of this it? This in DVR. Yeah. So this guy, the guy had a big spreadsheet, <clears throat> kept track of everything. Yes. Just dominated. But, I mean, the so the final thing is, he's not even up there, but another guy's doing the showcase showdown, and he yells out the exact right amount. It's like 20-something thousand. He's figured it out. And the guy nails it. And I feel bad because the woman that he was competing against, she came within 400 and something dollars of getting hers right. Hers was $30,000. That's an incredible bid. And she knew she probably had it. And then yeah. this guy gets exactly right. Well, people wouldn't listen to him. And then they, some of them would figure out, too, like, to like listen to this guy. Because that was where he was the most damaged to the game. It wasn't him playing the game. Right. It was him yelling this stuff out. And once people realized that, like, oh, you should be listening to this guy, this guy knows. Because everybody just yells all these crazy things, and this guy was just yelling the exact amount. And once, like, you would see some people, like, catch on to it Mm -hmm. and be like, that guy knows what he's doing. And then they would listen to him. How do you think you would do Price is Right? Do you know the price of milk? Uh, no. I, uh, Would you listen to your wife $3. if she was yelling? How much is milk? $3? I used to think, you know, uh, 
my iced coffee with milk joke that I had one part of it that came from an old way. I would say milk was not uh, milk is not in your life unless a woman is in your life. Like you go, you have milk growing up because your mom always making you drink all this milk, and then you go to college or you live on your own. You never buy milk. Milk's just gone. And then you get married again, and milk is right back into your life. Like, guys just tend to not do milk. You just don't think to buy it, I think. Oh, I don't think that at all. Well, you're a 50-year-old, 100-year-old man. <laughs> I think so single guys eat milk. cereal three meals a day. Cereal's the only thing, but I don't, but I, I don't, I don't know what they do. I think they eat, eat breakfast, you know. I, I just, just debunked that joke. No, it, it jokes <laughs> stands to this day. It's still good. It was good in the eighties. It's still good now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's it's. I don't know. I don't know how I would do on prices. Right. I, I you know. I don't. I mean, it's. I know you. It seems like a simple game, but it's like how much of these beans? I mean, no one knows. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. no one's paying that much. It's not like it's a rich or poor problem. It's not like there's. Poor people on it, they're like, I know all the prices of these. It's all weird things that, you know, it's funny as two people, remember that, who was that guy we met that won a car? That's right. His name was Kramer. His name was Kramer, which is unbelievable. His real, his real name's Kramer. Yeah. And he was like a Kramer from Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was the manager at the time at Stardome in Birmingham. Okay. And he uh, was taking us around for media, and he's like, yeah, I won on the prices right. Well, we were walking back to the car, and he's like, look at my license plate, and it... It had like a Price is Right thing, and he said, oh. I won that on the Price is Right. And he won the whole thing. Won the whole thing. Showcase Showdown. Wow. Yeah. yeah. How long ago? It had uh, been a few years, but I, it's on YouTube. I looked yeah. it up. Okay. He, because he talked about too, like when those guys win, you have to pay taxes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, so people have big trouble, like if they win the money or if they win these prizes on Price is Right. I mean, some people have to just sell the car, I guess, or they have to, like, you can buy it. Like, but it's it's kind of interesting to think like oh this person's won all this stuff and then maybe they don't even get to get it because they can't afford. I had someone else. My, I t- talked to my neighbor about it. My neighbor's saying on uh, that home makeover show that they used to do, they would redo someone's house and then after they re after they left, they would go reappraise the home and then their taxes would go up. <laughs> And then, like, people would be now. I don't, I, I didn't look it up to see if that was true or not, but I'd heard that too. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty crazy to be like, you think, oh, I'm gonna get this free. Like, nothing's you know, when like people get cash on you always, uh, some game shows, like, you win a hundred dollars cash and they never would get the actual cash. Mm-hmm. I, I did, uh, I did one a game show, I forget who Jeff, I want to say Jeff Dye hosted it on MTV, and we would. Tell people would go into stores and it was on MTV and would see how long they could stay in there before they got kicked out. And so you would tell them to do crazy things. Oh, I remember things. that. Yeah. You would tell them to do crazy things. And then if they could do, if they would do them all, if they said no, then they're out of the game. And if they do them, then they get money. And you'd always say, like, oh, you get like a hundred bucks cash, but they would never get the cash. And it was like always like, so you're like, just give them the cash. Like, the whole point of this game is like they can walk away and be like, I got this cash instead of like being some weird, instead of we a hundred bucks, they get $63, you know, and it's a check and it comes later. But I remember the, I had the, my funniest moment on there was we, they, we went to this candy store and I told this girl, I had her go around asking people cause she wasn't 18 to buy her the candy cigarettes. <laughs> So anybody else that she'd go in, she'd go up to adults and go, I can't afford to buy these. Will you buy these cigarettes for me? And they're like, I mean, they're candy. Like anybody can buy them. And they're like, I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I'm not 18. So can you buy me these cigarettes? And so she would ask everybody. It's kind of fun. Yeah. And I had her do the milk joke. Uh, I go, hey, tell this milk thing. Workshop this one. I go, try this. That guy seems like he would get this milk thing. Uh, so you don't think it's a rich poor thing on price right? You think celebrities like they have celebrity who wants to be a millionaire mm-hmm. or family fee? You think celebrities would do just as well on prices right? I don't know if they would do just as well. I'm just I'm just saying like it's not like there's a mom on prices right that's like buying milk every day, being like I'm like just <laughs> crushing it. Like she goes shopping or something and then she knows all the prices. I don't think it's that. 
Isn't that used as a litmus test for like politicians for how relatable they are? Yeah, I feel like that's used all the time. You don't even know what a gallon of milk costs, right? Yeah, you know. And most people are like, I don't know what a gallon. Like, yeah. When you think, I mean, because you're not ever gonna. I'm sure there's a time where you see how much milk. I mean, there is some people that I think get mad when milk goes up. Like they notice that, like milk is five dollars now or whatever. You know, how much is milk? Do you know how much milk? I is? I don't know how much milk is. I'm gonna get I'm how gonna much get is milk. Three seventy nine. Oh, you asked the woman. I get like oat milk, three dollars. Oat milk is three dollars. Uh, what about what oat milk is? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, uh, what about gas? Do you notice gas prices? I do. Yeah. You know what gas? Uh, I remember the what's the cheapest you've ever seen gas? I remember seeing gas uh, for sixty nine cents. Wow, was the cheapest I ever saw gas. And I, I and I was driving, and I and I remember <laughs> the I, guy just hadn't put the two up yet. Yeah, and he went yeah, by. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was way more than it seemed. Uh, but I when we filled it up. I mean, I remember putting. I would put five dollars in my car. Like that's all I, you would put, and it'd be half a tank. Ten was a full tank, and that was you know you put five dollars. And that was in high school. I mean, it sounds now it sounds like I grew up in the thirties. Like, <laughs> but it was. I remember it being sixty nine cents, and I just remember thinking, man, because it was always under a dollar. I think was what it was, and then but sixty nine cents. I was like, it was in Murfreesboro, and I saw it, and I and I went and filled up. Because I was like, you, you're like, you have to. But that's when you're, now I fill my car up. That's a very, a, an adult thing versus a kid thing is like, adult is like, you just always fill your car up. Mm. And then when you're in high school or in college, I mean, you're just putting in the, basically enough to get you to the next gas station. Like, yeah. it's like, you're never really throwing all your money in it. I think you're always hoping your parents somehow drive your car, like, or, or something happens. Where you're like they give you gas money somehow, but I remember what's the cheapest you do you remember? Thirty two cents. Really? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't really. I don't know if the cheapest. I don't think I notice it until it gets below like two dollars. Because now sometimes you know it's pretty cheap right now. There's places like Lebanon. Yeah. Dollar eighty seven. Dollar eighty seven. Yeah. Uh, I there's a there's a gas station in in L A. And my buddy Travis would always point it out. It's like right in, it's kind of in Beverly Hills, but it's uh, it's kind of it's in the middle, kind of on its own. And it's he's always like five dollars. He's always maybe two dollars above everybody else. And it's so like it, you're almost like the audacity of this guy. He just doesn't care because it's like you could just drive a little bit more. And it would not, it's unreasonable how expensive this is. And you see people there, because I think he's just like, he's in Beverly Hills. He's like, look, these people don't know how much gas costs. Uh-huh. And they, so he just puts it up for more. And then it's, it's a, I think it's a BP or MAPCO or something. And it's, I always see it. And I've never, when Travis pointed it out to me, I noticed it. And I was like, God, that's so funny that this dude just is like, whatever, man. And I'm just charging more. <laughs> I don't really understand price gouging, but I remember when I worked at the TV station uh, and prices went way up for gas, people would call complaining like, there's a guy selling it for three twenty nine, and everywhere else around it across the street, it's 80 cents cheaper. I don't think that's price gouging. Like, why wouldn't you just go to those other places? I think price gouging is when you have no other choice. Yes. I'm looking at... Yeah, well, I remember yeah. seeing gas stations would be more expensive than be across the street. And then you would still see people over there, like so you you know it might be like three twenty nine, and then across the street would be like three nineteen, mm-hmm. and so you'd be like, well, why is why would you not just go to three nineteen? And then I mean, people would still be at the three twenty nine because I don't know if they would even notice or they would even care. Like, what if, would make you choose the one that's slightly more expensive? Is there anything about the gas station that would make you go, I'm willing to pay? If his wife told him to go to the cheaper one, uh, yeah, that's what she she'd want. <laughs> but it's I would. Mine would be if I feel like I'm getting duped, that's when I don't do it. So, like, if I saw them across the street from each other and say it's the same kind of gas, gas station, uh, I would be like, well, I'm going to the cheaper one just because I'm not an, an idiot and I feel like you're making me feel like an idiot. I get very, like, if I feel like you're duping me on purpose, then I, then I go to the other one. You would one. feel like an idiot if you spent one more cent a gallon? Not one more cent, like ten cents. Oh, like ten, ten cents. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ten cents is his idiot cut yeah. off. Ten cents is like Eight? what am I? I don't know, man. Yeah, that could go one. either way. Come on, <laughs> who do you think I am, dude? Ten yeah, cents. Ten cents more. 
That adds up, the gallons. I can never tell anybody what a gallon number is. Like, how many, when they ask your car, they're like, uh, how many gallons did you get? Uh, like a mile? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, they're like, how many gallons is in your, in your car? And I'm like, I have, I don't know. I've never known, like, that kind of mileage. Like, you know, if a car is like, this gets this many miles to the gallon, it's like, that never reg. you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They should come up with a better way. They should just be like, this car cost $40 to fill up. That That's how they should sell cars. And you'd be like, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I don't think they want you even thinking about, you got to spend money on gas. Yeah. Yeah, so they do it. Like, they break it down. That That's like, what about a rental car? I've started doing... When I would rent uh, with Avis, they do a. Uh, or I try to rent Avis when I rent cars. Uh, they were renting cars was ten years ago when you could actually go out in public. Uh, but they're in. When I did Avis, they do it. You can do a thing where you prepay to fill it up, and you just have to have it to empty for it to be worth it. But I like that. Like I always love that. So you don't have to because you know you're trying to find a gas station somewhere else. But I mean they charge. You know if you don't fill your car up. And you return it. I mean, they will be like, it's like seven dollars a gallon. It's like something that's ridiculous. Yeah, where it's more than the car. You know, that you're like, I forgot. And they're like, ah, all right. that's. <laughs> a, they're like, some guy walks out with a cigar and tuxedo. Like he's like, yeah, he's been making a living, which is so crazy. Why do they charge? Why is it that much more? I have no idea. You know, what's the system with that? Let's we get to the bottom of that and in investigating series of Nate Land. Where we go, excuse me, Avis, uh, you were talking about celebrities. Could they, here's what I, I uh, a joke idea that I had, but I thought with like, uh, with celebrities, like making money, like I was thinking like Tom Cruise, uh, Tom Cruise lives in a, I've been, by the way, I've been going through Mission Impossible, I'm going through them all, Okay. Uh, back through them all. They're great. Do, he does all his own stunts. I watched a whole YouTube video on that. He were like, and it's pretty crazy the stunts he's willing to do. I mean, this guy is basically a walking Walmart. Like he's, he's his name's on a movie, and it's going to make a billion dollars. So it's like they he has to be protected. And I mean, Tom Cruise. You think about how famous he's been. His, I mean, his whole life he's been famous. I mean, there's no reality he lives in. Like you know, and I'm not saying I think he. You always hear he's a great guy. I think he's a nice, like, from all the stuff you see, everybody says he's, anybody I've uh, met that knew him, uh, or I, I, people I know that have met him, they're always like, he's amazing, dude. Like, someone met him, and the guy told him, he's like, just so you know, when you meet him, you're going to be like, oh, we're best friends, and he's the greatest guy ever. Because he's that, he's like that much engaged with you. When he talks to you, he really looks at you and, like, remembers you, and, like, he's just got a wonderful, just a wonderful person. But he, he can't. Like, if he goes into 7-Eleven and buy gum, and they're like, it's $2. Like, I don't know if he's going to even know, like, what it means. You know, like, if he's going to be like, oh, it's $2. Right. Like, I think if he walked in, you could be like, it's $27 for gum. And, and then he might be like, oh, it's a, it's a little bit cheaper than it was. When I, like, oh, <laughs> it's gone down. Like, I don't think he would even, would he even know $20 is? Like... <laughs> Is he going to, like, his cash? And maybe he is. Maybe he's into money. Like, maybe he thinks about money. But, I mean, that's someone that's like, I don't know if you would ever even see the money coming in or out. Like, yeah. would you, you're, you're never seeing, like, here's your paycheck for this. It's just money gets put in. He has, you know, business people. Money gets put in, and then money's getting taken out. Like, where, you know, I don't know. Does he have any inkling of there's a scene in rain man where he asked dustin hoffman how much a candy bar is i think the doctor asked and he says about a hundred dollars yeah tom cruise probably didn't even get why that was funny <laughs> yeah he's probably like i don't get this but sure it's in the line yeah it's in the line hundred dollars yeah. yeah you think even back then <laughs> yeah well yeah i mean probably back then i mean dude he's been famous my whole life i'm 41 and so yeah probably my whole life mm-hmm. been mega famous. So you're saying he's just so far removed from a normal life. He's like a corporation at this point. I think he is. All a the money coming in and out. He's not even seeing it. He, you know, he's not doing his own shopping. He's not going to, he can't. Know. Yeah. You know, like last dance, they talk about Jordan. Jordan would, uh, call a 
uh, grocery store and they'd stay open for him so he could come shop alone. I mean, it's that. Like, it's like Tom Cruise is that. Where, like, those guys, they can't go out. They can't go by themselves. It's it's too insane. Mm-hmm. You would see, if, if someone sees Tom Cruise, if, you're, if a celebrity sees Tom Cruise, they're going to be nervous. Like, someone else that's famous would be like, oh, my gosh, it's Tom Cruise. You just can't be above that just because that guy has been in your face on everything for 30 years, 40 years. Like, so there, there's no way he can buy anything, dude. I mean, he can't. He's not going to the store. Like, he's not. That should be the next Mission Impossible. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Tom Cruise that shopping. A shopping list. He goes, can he do it? Here's your shopping list. Yeah. You have to make dinner for four. <laughs> do you accept this? What are they, do you accept this mission? And he's like, oh. And then they go, your note will explode in five. He's like, I got to memorize the whole list. I think and you just say no. He says, I can't do it. <laughs> it's the first it, one I'm not taking. That would be a good show to have super rich people. And have them go, have them go buy, do regular things. That's the thing that I don't understand. Like when you know, like when celebrities, like people, like listen to celebrities for like things that are important, like advice or whatever. And to me, it's like that's why I don't get it. Like people need to realize that you're like they don't live in your world. Like they don't understand. Some of them get t- so far removed. That they're, 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 nothing they do is normal. Nothing. And it's not, I'm not even blaming them. I mean, some of them can't go out in public without getting mobbed. Like, that's got to be exhausting to, like, always just everywhere you go is just people. You know, Taylor Swift just gets, she wants to go to the store. She can't. She's got to just, they get, like, our, you know, Brad Pitt, like, would watch, uh, he watched Tom Segura's special. Like, and we, some, I heard that. I was talking to Tom about, like, someone find out. He's like, I'm a big fan of Tom Segura. And they're like, why are you watching stand-up? And he's like, well, I can't go anywhere. Like, so I just watch Netflix all day. And you're like, yeah, because wow. he, he can't do anything. I mean, Brad Pitt's another one. Like, Brad Pitt, you know, and I'm not saying these guys are not even normal guys. I think there are good, nice guys. But I'm saying there's, there's just things that they would never even, he doesn't know how to, like, his if his water bill is paid, like... <laughs> You know what I mean? Like he's not going to even know. Like what? Like you think what those you, guys mow their own lawn? Do you think any of them? I are bet like, you could I'm find gonna... someone that randomly like is just like I want to do something that's normal. Yeah. And then they maybe choose to do it. But I mean, I think they asked the guy that mows their lawn, "Can I mow it today?" <laughs> like I don't think it's. Can I push that? Yeah. He's like, "Do you mind if I do a little bit of it?" And the guy's like, "Sure." And like you know, I'm. I think the guy that mows it is there, and watches the kid watches. Brad Pitt mow the grass and then <laughs> he puts the stuff away. Like I think lets, he, he lets he, him drive and he's yeah. behind him. He sits in his lap like he just and Brad Pitt's in like a guy's lap. Now turn now, turn, turn, like, turn, 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 turn. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, yeah, I don't think I don't think they're doing. I, I mean, it'd be very interesting. I mean, look, I've been around. Oh, here we I, go. I, I know. Here we go. Let me tell you something. I have a lot of money. I'm a billionaire <laughs> and. No, I've been around billionaires. I've talked like I knew uh, Paul Allen, uh, <clears throat> who's a wonderful, wonderful person. Invented computers. I, I knew him like I. Uh, I did a show for him. like you'd meet because we get do these shows and these shows are crazy. So you'd be around Paul like, and I mean, Paul's was like just like a like a world. I, I did this crazy cruise where I did a show, uh, which I think here. I always never know if I'm you were it was like a thing that I had to like sign a thing and you couldn't talk about it that I did it. But Quincy Jones was on it and then he talked about it in a Rolling Stone interview. So it's out. But so I did this cruise where I uh I got hired just to be a comedian on this cruise. And Paul Allen was put together, he wanted to do a, a this kind of cruise that whereas like Basically, people that are super famous and a lot of them wealthy that can't take normal vacations, and he and he and he got it was like a, a group of very awesome people that got together, and it was people that were you know tech people, and there were celebrities on it, and I was hired just to be honest. So it was in uh, we flew to Vietnam. My wife went, and we got on a cruise ship that he rented out. So it was like two hundred people on this cruise ship. And uh, he just rented, and they told us he wanted to invest, like the Wi-Fi. I watched, you know, when North Carolina and Villanova play. Villanova won the championship. I watched that in the South China Sea, and we they had it on Wi-Fi, 
and their Wi-Fi was not great, so he just invested in the company and then upgraded their Wi-Fi. <laughs> Like it was like it's so it's like it's like stuff like that like you know what I mean where like their brain doesn't think like I wish the Wi Fi was better and like <laughs> they try to do something he's like I'll make it better and I'll just in, get into your company and uh, Paul was an I mean it was an amazing dude like you know the the little bit that I was around him and knew him but was very nice was into like loved like would talk to me about comedy would like talk with jokes he loved musicians like he played too he's like you probably did not as much as you, not as talented as you are because you did everything and then uh so but we would meet all these crazy you know I, just crazy people dude like that was and i remember doing i, I did the show and it was like a crazy show to do because i i was so nervous with like because we're in the south and everybody in that i'm performing for is just famous or wealthy like it's just you know and you are a little worried that you're like i'm gonna be how are you gonna be relatable uh -huh. to these people but it worked out and it was great and like uh i mean i met i mean joe walsh from the eagles was on it uh super fun dude very funny he's very and he loves comedy uh I mean, there's a, I don't know if I'd be naming it. Like, there's a ton of people that was on it. <laughs> it was you know, Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise. No, they were not on it. Uh, I wish they were. Uh, but it was an amazing Quincy Jones. Like, like he's on it. Like, talk to him a little bit. I mean, he's like, you know, super old, but like, you're like doing that. And then we ended up staying the whole time on the cruise. They asked me to do another set because I was supposed, we were supposed to fly off. But it like went the show went good and Paul was like, Oh, why don't you and your wife stay? Because it was like a nine day thing. And then so now we're staying. Now it's now it's fun. You're kind of talking to everybody. It's like normal. Uh and you're doing all this stuff. Quentin Tarantino was on it. Oh, uh wow. he was very fun. He after I did my second set, I saw him right when I got off. And uh he just went up to me, he goes, Oh, how'd it go? And I was like, oh, it was good. And he was like, I'm just kidding, man. I watched it. It was great. <laughs> like, it was like, he was like very fun like that. Yeah. Uh, but they, um, it was like this amazing uh, group of people. But it, it's a group of people that don't like know. I heard Paul talk about someone. He told someone, it was like a French director, like someone that's huge. And he's telling him like, <laughs> He goes, oh, I, uh, I, so he goes, my NFL team, I have the Seattle Seahawks. I own an NFL. He's like explaining it to him. And it was so funny just to hear it. Like, I like, you know, like the draft was about to happen. I'm like trying to ask him questions about the draft. Like, what are they going to do? And, uh, and he's like explaining to someone like, oh, well, I have a team, an NFL team. And so we play football. And he's like explaining the guys like, oh, okay. Well, how's that? Like, and he's just like, and the guy's like truly interested in like, it would be like my daughter plays softball and I, or plays baseball and I, uh, I run the team. I sponsor the team. It would be something like that, but he's talking about the Seahawks <laughs> and you're just sitting there watching them like, just like be like, oh, okay. Like it was, uh, I don't know. I don't know what this story might be. Uh, anyway, this, that it was an amazing, but being around those guys, uh, -huh. Like that, he's in a different world, man. Like he's not obviously he's a yeah. he's a billionaire. He's I mean he's in another. It's just I don't know. Money is just not. I, the meaning of money is not the same to them, you know. But I think it means something to them. They do want the money, but their money comes in. Like you got to think. Like if you get a check for if you make a thousand dollars a week, I mean they make you know Patrick Mahomes. They broke down his thing. He's going to make like a million dollars a week. <coughs> Mm -hmm. or something like in, for his new contract like that's like so a check comes in for one million dollars every week there's a point they get used to seeing that money you get used to seeing a million dollars a week so you're not even like wow i can't believe this is another million to, you know you're like whatever you probably you could have a one that you have you forgot to cash like you could have one can you imagine having a million dollar check and you're like did we put that in? And then if you lose it, you're like, I don't know. I might have lost a couple million here. And there. Like, if you have, you know, we're talking about Jeff Bezos. I mean, he's got, what's his net worth? Like, it fluctuates. Uh, let's pull it up here. 150 billion. Well, close. According to Forbes, I guess it depends on the stock market. Uh, let's see here. A couple days ago, it was at 196 billion. Is what they had his net worth. Now it has 181. I think it's based on. 
Yeah, see he, how Amazon's doing. Who's Bernard, he had a tough day. He lost Arnold. eighteen billion dollars in net worth. Who's, who's Bernard? All right, let's find out. So I think we all know the other three here. And... Yeah. What does this guy do? Oh, he owns Louis Vuitton, Sephora. He owns a bunch of oh yeah. luxury brands like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and he bought Tiffany Company. Uh, first ring I ever bought my wife was at Tiffany and Company. It was a two hundred dollar. I went in and bought the cheapest ring they had. Did you ask for the cheapest ring? I, and I was. I mean, I gave the vibe off yeah, of yeah. this guy. <laughs> they they didn't walk me over to some other counters. I was waiting tables in Chicago when I started comedy. And uh, I bought her. I think she still has the ring. And I well, bought her a Tiffany. Because I heard, she, I, you know, where you hear, like, your <laughs> girl mentions something. And uh, my wife's not into, like, super materialistic. She doesn't really care about stuff. But I just heard her. Like, it was, I knew it was a nice thing. And I think I heard her say something. And I bought a ring at Tiffany Company. So I, I'm part of that $110 billion, is what I'm saying. $200 of it. And he would be like... I appreciate it, man. Thank like you know if I told him that. How you doing, Mister uh, Arnott and your family? I would love to. And your family. And your family. Uh, I I have I'm a part of the Tiffany family. I bought two hundred dollar ring from you in two thousand and three, I believe, maybe four. I don't know. You might guys can look that up. Uh, but I'm excited for your success. <laughs> you know, and he's you're re- welcome. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. And he's like, oh, man, I really appreciate, you know, that means a lot. You know, that's how we get where we get is about the $200 at a time. <laughs> like he's, man. And then his security tasers me and I go down. Uh, so these guys are all, in, I mean, the top three man. are over $100 billion. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, so a, a billion dollars yeah. is, you know, like for you to live a life of that you can do whatever you want. I don't know what you need. Like, you know, he's got a lot of instruments. So, yeah, you got a lot of money to fly out the door. Uh, Like, if you got ten million dollars, if someone gave you ten million dollars, is that enough? Like, it if you're thirty years old, is ten million enough to be like, you're good. You don't have to work because what people don't realize too is like, you're what you're the way you live goes up. Like the way you. You go buy a nicer house. You live in a different neighborhood. You have a different car. Like, so, like, people think, like, if you're, like, some guy's in an apartment by himself, he's like, dude, I could live off $10 million easy. And then you're like, well, you're not going to stay in the, yeah, if you stayed in that apartment, you could, like, but if you, I mean, you could live off more than $10 million, not that, but, you know, but if you go buy a million-dollar home, if someone gives you $10 million, you're probably, not, you're probably buying a $2 million home. Well, now you're down to $8 million. And then... You're, you know, and then milk is probably going to go crazy. <laughs> gas is yeah. you're only you're only going to that one expensive gas place because you can afford it, and you're just in out of reason. You go, I go to the one that's five dollars, and everybody's yeah. like, "Why would you not do the three dollar one?" And it's like, because I have ten million dollars yeah. and spend time with a bunch of plebes. Yeah, down at the yeah. BP, yeah. Dude. Yeah. let's go. Yeah. What I gotta get? Yeah, someone trying to sell me cigarettes in the parking lot. I go to. <laughs> The real deal. I saw this on uh, on Reddit yesterday about the, the a visualization of the difference between a million and a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. I'm always fascinated by these. If you took uh, one million one dollar bills and you stacked them up and you laid them down on their side, that stack of one million one dollar bills would be about 120 yards long. So it take you. You know, a minute and a half. I, mean, to, I thought you to, were going to say the length of this table. <laughs> I mean, I, I was expected to be like, it would be, it's like this. And you're like, is it? It's a, like, a one million one dollar bill. I'm just saying with my head, you, if you would have gave me a second, I would never have said 120 yards. Yeah. I was thinking you were going to be like, a little more than this table. Yeah. And I would be like, wow, okay. And I would believe that. So that that's impressive. I thought you were setting us up to... Sh- about how small it would be. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, now, well, now let's say we have a, a so it takes about a how long to walk 120 yards? Maybe a minute and a half. <sighs> Depends who's walking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you took one billion one dollar bills and stacked those up and laid it down on its side, how how long do you think that stack would be? I mean, it's got to be thousand yards or something. Sixty eight miles. Sixty eight miles. Sixty eight miles long. So a little over a thousand yards. <laughs> I think a little bit over. A yeah. Little, yeah. It'd take you an hour to drive to the end of it. 
an hour. Okay, so that's the difference. You go from walking a minute and a half to driving for an hour. That's the difference between a million and a billion. If you go to a trillion, which people are talking oh, about boy, Jeff Bezos being a trillionaire, yeah, then that's 68,000 miles, which is like two and a half times around the circumference of the earth. That's how long that stack of money is. Of dollar. You of, know. One, of one dollar bills, yeah. Pretty crazy. I mean, it w- yeah, it would be all the dollar bills. Like, would you not? Would like, would dollar bills just be gone? Like, if some, if a trillionaire is like, I want all my money in dollar bills. And what are Singles, you gonna, please. Yeah, and sing. And you're, what are you going to say? No, I mean, he's a trillionaire. He's like the first one, obviously. And you can't. He's like, no, I control money, and so we just all our dollar bills are out of circuit. Like. Everybody, you just see everything you have to buy in dollar bills. You're like, why are we having to pay in dollar bills now? Because this Jeff Bezos has Jeff all Bezos the ones. Wants w- all the ones. <laughs> he wanted to stack them up. It's a power move. There's no more change. You pay five dollars, you get five dollars back because they can't break it. They just have to go. <laughs> I have to just keep the five. Yeah. The whole system. Falls Kro- apart. Kroger just announced that they're not giving you change back anymore. Really. Yeah, they don't have it. Like the Federal Reserve's not pretty, unless you go through self checkout, which makes me think they just won't. It's a way to get you to go through self checkout. Well, they don't want COVID. Wow. I would think not to touch. Yeah, does that have to do with coronavirus? I don't know. I just read the headline. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Let's move on. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I think it was you can. They can. You have two options. You can donate that change to charity that they would have given you, or they put it on your your like your loyalty card. Yeah, that's but that's, that's what, insane. They do the charity. Them asking people ask for charity. These, uh, <laughs> it's infuriating. Everywhere they you go, charity. I, you know what? I don't give to anything. No, <laughs> we. I give stuff. We give stuff privately. You just yeah. give your things that you give, and you and you make sure that you give. Uh, what you? I mean, you try to do the right thing, and then. But like when you go to like any regular store. And they're like, do you want to give this money? Hey, some of them, you're like, I don't, tr- like, who are you giving this mm-hmm. to? Is it going to go somewhere? Like, I, I've always thought with charity, there's a weird, I have a weird thing with some charity, like cancer. All <laughs> this money's gone to cancer. They haven't solved any of it. Like, they haven't. I mean, dude, how much money's raised? Look, Steve, if you look how much money's no, been well, raised for cancer. I don't even want to. I mean, is it a trillion dollars? I feel like, icky even doing this. And they haven't, like, there's not, like, we've got, you know, we're close. Like, could you be like, we're close. We're near cancer. <laughs> I mean, they're not. Cancer. We're got, like, I mean, there's a head start. If you get toe cancer, it's not even a problem anymore. Like, there should be something. How much money is raised each year for cancer research? So in 2018, the I mean the government paid 39 billion for uh, I I don't really have any idea. What I'm yeah. looking. At. I don't know why I started to read that real confidently. I think they're making some advances on cancer. There's a lot of cancers though. I know, but solve one. We're all giving <laughs> money to cancer. Have one be fixed. Why do we keep giving all this money to cancer? And it's we're getting nowhere. What do they need? Seventy like seventy billion will be the one that sends us over. Give it to one. Look, I don't know how science works, but I imagine let's write a check to one guy that's that's the best guy, and be like, here's all the money. Go solve the cancer. All right, there it is, right there. Look, where the where the cancer money's going? Oh, breast cancer. Why is it? How's that? Breast cancer is the up? most funded cancer research by a by a, wow a all factor right. of two. So let's There's not two of them. Look, yeah. we might have my mom had kidney cancer and she's all right. She just uh, well, there you go. Caught it very early. A lot of money went to it. She actually got a check for twenty million dollars. So I didn't know where that came from, uh, <laughs> but now I see. Uh, I, I'm just look. Do I believe in can? No, I start it. I just. It never made sense to me to think, like, we donate all this. Does, it, does that make sense? We donate all this money to something, and you're like, mm-hmm. I feel like we're nowhere with cancer. <laughs> like, it's it's still just brutal on everybody. And, like, you would think one of the cancers should be like, we got it. We figured it out. Like, it's, you know, I mean, how many people are working on this cancer? Like, they're doing, like, COVID vaccines. They're, like, getting somewhere because, I mean, uh-huh. they put a, like, 
all the money, like everybody wants this COVID vaccine. So they're at least like, you're seeing like, all right, we're almost like at least some kind of a vaccine. And so with cancer, you're like, we've been raising money for cancer for 50 years. It's as long as Tom Cruise has been, it's been <laughs> Tom Cruise's first movie. He's been just giving money to cancer. I mean, I just feel like we should be, and maybe we are. I mean, you I know. think we are. Yeah, I think you we've got like we're better. any better off than we were 50 years ago I think, with cancer? I think we are, but it's been 50 years of just maybe billions and billions of dollars being thrown at the research. Uh-huh. I mean, you don't think there should be, like, it's solved? Like, this says, currently there's no cure for cancer, but recent advances in medicine and technology are helping move us closer than ever to a cure. Wow. There you go. There you go. Nice little statement for $100 trillion. <laughs> in, like, just to be like, we're, we're getting there. May, and maybe we are getting there. What do I know, man? But I just, I'm just saying. If you gave me a billion dollars, I feel like I'd figure it out. If it said, Aaron, here's a they billion said, dollars. Aaron, you cure cancer, here's a billion dollars. I would. Can I'd, you I'd make the xylophone out. more? <laughs> can people move it around easier? Can you figure a way yeah. to have people travel with it? I could do it. In their pocket. In their pocket. For $1 billion. Yeah. You think you could do it? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Would yeah. you make the instrument smaller or pants bigger? <laughs> you have a billion dollars, so you could go two different ways. <laughs> how, do you, how do you attack the problem? Do you go instrument smaller? Because I don't know if you really can, so you, then maybe you dive into the pant world, <laughs> That's which is something a billionaire does, is they, they think outside the they box. They think outside the box. Uh, the and pants. you go, and they go, oh, how'd you make it that small? You go, I didn't, I didn't even touch the instrument. But have you seen pants lately? <laughs> Their pockets are gigantic. Pockets are enormous. enormous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> problem. Yeah. Problem Here solved. Here we go. Uh, That's hilarious. It's a billion dollar idea right there. So I don't know. We got a you know, cancer. <laughs> cancer yeah. solved. Here's uh, someone that we looked at that was interesting. El- uh, our uh, Pablo Escobar. Yep. Was on the Forbes list. Which if anybody watched Narcos, I'm. An enormous Narcos fan. Narcos is unbelievable on Netflix. Uh, I love like cartel. Like I don't know. I'm obsessed with like cartels. Like, I it's just so crazy to me. I think it's it's it feels like, you know, uh, I you know it always like stuck with me. I remember a long time ago. I was in near the Mexican border near Juarez. I was in, I think it's Arizona or New Mexico, that whatever backs up to it. And I was, we were close to the Warriors, but like you could go there. And this is like in, you know, I was probably 20 years old. And um, I remember seeing the news in my hotel room and they said, no one go to Juarez. It's a lawless place right now. <laughs> and I remember just seeing that in the news and I was like, that's crazy, dude. Like, I mean, I've never heard like that. And it was like, that was 20 years ago. And it was just always like, I don't know. I always think about that. But then you start now seeing these cartels and like the way it is down there, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, there was a, a guy that did nar- narcos that was like a scout, like a location scout guy, was killed by the cartel. Like, how crazy is that? For he makes it's a Netflix show. It's not like they were doing some weird documentary. <laughs> it's a Netflix show. And that guy was killed by the cartel. Like, it's like Man. you just can't go do anything there. Uh, but Escobar, so what do you, he, he was in, in 2019, he was his, if he were alive, his net worth would have been equivalent to 59 billion. So look at this list of who else he'd be right up there with. Uh, Michael Bloomberg's currently worth 60 billion. Mackenzie Bezos, Jeff Bezos, ex-wife, 59.9. That's crazy. 50. She got, how much she got? She got $60 billion. She got, I think, thirty-six billion oh, in the divorce, made, and then she already had a billion. I guess she had some stock in Amazon or something. I don't know. Dude, how imagine that divorce? Is that is that bothering? You get a divorce, and she gets, and you're worth two hundred billion dollars. So she gets, or hundred, she gets half of his hundred some billion dollars. Like I, 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 I told my wife, I go, look, <laughs> if we ever get a divorce, you're out of your mind if you think you're getting some of my billion dollars. Her argument is we don't have even nowhere near one billion dollars, <laughs> but I said when, if I do get there, you're you're not getting half of the billion. Yeah. Like, does it not feel? But she made a good point to be like, look, if you get if you have fifty grand and you get a divorce, they get twenty five grand. And I'm a if, if they've been there from the like if they've been there from the get go, like I get it. Like my wife's been with me before I ever started comedy, 
Uh, so she deserves half of whatever I have, which is close to $4 billion. <laughs> and then, but she, you know, like I, I, I'm not against, but there's a point. If a guy's got $120 billion, don't they just go, well, that's kind of ridiculous for you to get $60 billion. Like, do they not say, that's insane. We will give you... I don't know, one billion or five hundred million or one billion. Should put a cap on it somewhere. They should go if you're just that there should be a cap in the divorce court to go if you have more money than the state you're getting divorced in, <laughs> yeah. you don't the the wife gets one billion dollars. She doesn't get who do you think has more of a right to their fifty nine billion dollars? Mackenzie Bezos or Pablo Escobar? I mean pa- Pablo worked I mean he built that. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I don't know what she's done. <laughs> I'm kidding, but oh, oh, you, yeah, oh, you're. I was saying what you know, one acquired it through a divorce, the other one acquired it through murder. Yeah, <laughs> building a, you know, <laughs> He's a drug empire. Here. I don't know, man. It's it's uh, a tough one. I'm not on board with either. You know, you know I think Pablo took the harder route. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he he was burying his money. See that's the thing. These the cartel. I mean, how they probably have more money liquid than any of these people, <laughs> because you know I, I am. A, I don't know what it's like being this rich, but I'm, I imagine most of their net worth is tied is, up. And it's like having a lot of instruments in your house. <laughs> Hippo, hippos for yeah. Pablo. He had hippo. Yeah, he had hippos. But I would say Pablo Escobar. He probably had more cash than any of these people. Like actual cash. actual cash. Yeah. yeah, but it was buried. He forgot, and then it like would get messed up they it's some of it they stay still buried i did uh when i did shows for the troop we went to saddam's palace and uh and then uh we so going to his palace i feel like y'all are looking like you're one of my dumb stories i'm <laughs> no, sorry i've done no. a lot of things aaron you want to bounce <laughs> like what do you want me to do i'm sorry why don't y'all talk about performing in nashville locally more uh so <laughs> There's, I've done a lot. I've done, I've been to Iraq multiple times. Uh, did show for Pablo's people. Uh, they, uh, I, I did think I once, when I went, I went to the Astro, the World Series Astros game when I was in town and I bought a ticket and I sat down and I think I sat next down to a cartel member, but that's a complete judgment because he bought, it was him and his whole family and I just pictured, but that's, that's completely probably not true. I wish, I hope it's true. Yeah, you know, but they look. It was like the, his 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 grandfather, and it's like it just looked like they could have been a family of you know, they're big Astro fans. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're sneaking in the U.S. Yeah. just to go to Game Three. I didn't say they were sneaking in the U.S. That's you. So I said they legally came in, and then <laughs> you just said cancer wasn't real, and <laughs> yeah, this is a and this women podcast should, is should a not lot get of, any money. <laughs> yeah, this is because what did we repeat what we talked about. All right, Pablo Escobar. <laughs> Saddam is saying those are the role models <laughs> of a, of what we need to be looked at. Cancer's not real. Everybody, check out Nate Land podcast. Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> Click the links. Leave a comment. Like it just, <laughs> so I performed at uh, or when I did. We did stuff for the troops. We would stay in Saddam's palace, and so it was unbelievable. And so you go around. So the, the interesting thing about Saddam's palace is he uh, he would make it, everything was painted gold. So it wasn't like real gold. So when you would see it, it was all painted gold because he he didn't want to. Sp- he had palaces everywhere, and so that way when people would see it, it just looks like it's gold, and people would be like, "Man, he's our leader. He's look how rich he is." And the, and the people right outside the gate, like, didn't, didn't have water. And so, I mean, it's, it's the difference. So when the when the soldiers took over uh, his palace, they. Uh, I mean, I went. His his son's palaces were on that property too. Like we saw where they the, the bomb like came through his palace, the son's palace. But they there, he had lions and tigers and like all this stuff. So the like our our troops like go in and they have to like fight people and then also lions like because they would just be there and they would have to like. Can you imagine like you're just in this in Iraq and you're he like he just had him at his house. He just like, had him at his house. Just as like pet. he had a safari. Yeah, and so they had to go and do that. And uh, it was, was he a billionaire? He probably, yeah. They, I mean, yeah. dude, some of those guys have crazy like I thought that would be the richest guys, the guys 
like this old money, like some yeah. of them, they have like stupid money. That's what they are the ones that like end up like paying for Beyonce to come sing yeah. to them for one million, and that's like nothing. Like they don't, you know. But I don't. I figure, yeah. Yeah, he was a billionaire. Two billion dollars at the time of his death. Two billion. Two billion. I mean, bears. Uh, good I mean, good night. They're like, <laughs> I wonder yeah. they Jeff Bezos was like, Ugh. <laughs> like he would just if he's sitting at his table, he's like, ah. <laughs> he goes, hey guys, Saddam's coming over, uh, and Saddam walks in with a bottle of wine, and you're like, he's like, I got this for you, and they're like, Ugh. like that's how you know, because I feel like you're that rich, you don't bring anything to a party, but he's like, we got two billion, so he's like. Here's a, like I bought Boone's a nice farm. And they're like, ah, oh, yeah, we're keeping it over. They roll when they open a window and just throw it out. They're like, thanks, man. And then we'll give that to the hippos like to drink wine. So we we'll use that for them. Give it to like, Pablo. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos' wife's there. And he's like, oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> so how's it going, Saddam? I mean, you getting by, buddy? Uh, and he's like, I flew commercial over here, and you're like, oh, God, oh. He probably has COVID. Oh, God, did you did they check his temperature at the door? Can we check? Do you mind if we uh, – but I just read this. Saddam's de- been dead for a while. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that's how I just find – oh. Yeah, we joke, got him. That joke went nowhere. Uh, so, all right, what, we, we got to be close. What are we at? <laughs> We're just over an hour. All right, uh, man, time's flying by. I did use. We did see a story where uh, you said it said once you make seventy five grand, you're no more happier. Yeah, this is a twenty ten study by Princeton University. Basically, said who's doing these studies? Uh, I'm, I'll University. go down to the end. They they just I I want to you know you never see a study that's like. Done by Volunteer State Community College. And you're like, oh, all right, I'll hear what that guy has to say. <laughs> like, they just, it's always one of these fancy schools. Harvard. Ball State Harvard. would be like, we hear if you get to yeah. 75. Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're going to be better off. Yeah. <laughs> Can't prove it. Dreams. Come to Ball State. We had a guy make seventy five grand one time. <laughs> they and can't even like, find anybody to ask. They can't even, like, <laughs> you went to Ball State. Just I went record. to Ball State. But did you and graduate what, from there? One day I'll make seventy five thousand dollars. Uh no. I didn't yeah. you know, I didn't graduate from anywhere. <laughs> Serial killer went there too. Do you know that? Really? Yep. Who? Paul Who? Reed. Who's Paul Reed? What did he do? He killed a bunch of uh fast food workers <laughs> here in Nashville area in the nineties. Friend of mine serious? had classes with him at Ball State. Yeah. And when he finally got arrested, he killed this is very morbid, but two people at Captain D's, two people at McDonald's and Hermitage. Three. I don't. Yeah. For the record, guys, <laughs> Hold on. I'm not condoning anything yeah. that's been said of this. Well, Captain D's, I'm on, but the other ones are. This no, sounds just, so <laughs> made up. He was no, just this getting... is real. One in, and then some employees up in Clarksville. So then one of the workers at McDonald's played dead, and he lived. So he he testified to the guy, and they arrested him. And when he went through Night Court for the first time, we finally seen this guy. He's wearing a Vol State shirt. Really? And you know Vol State must have just been like, oh, no. Yeah. But yeah, I had a friend of mine. A friend of mine had a class with Was him. he killing him through the drive through Like, he would... How was he doing it? Were they at work? <laughs> or was he these, I don't know if they had a drive through No, he was doing it inside there. I think... I can't oh, he remember. was actually going in. Yeah. Wow. I don't I figure you just do it through the drive through It was like, I feel like three different fast food murders. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Your buddy had a class with him. Like he, did he say, you know. Did she, he have any signs? Was it, oh yeah. Was it, yeah. Was she, did she like, you know. Uh, I think she remembers him. Did I mean, he's see, like, was he always making a list? Like, you know, like, <laughs> is he always like. He brought Captain D's to yeah. class every day. Yeah. He looked real mad about it. Though. Yeah. He goes, oh, stupid. He goes, one day, one day I'll show them. And they're like, what's that? Paul? <laughs> he goes, nothing, nothing. nothing. <laughs> Paul yeah. Reed, wow. Yeah. yeah, man, look him up. Uh, go ahead, Nate. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so I brought, got it brought on stage one time. Uh, it was like a weird story. Then they introduced me. They gave a car to a, a vet that had no legs. And they, gave, and they gave him a car. The whole audience is crying. Wow. <laughs> he had no idea. His name was his name was Nate, <laughs> and I, I swear to you, they give him a car. Everybody's crying, can't believe it, and they go, "All right, everybody, please welcome Nate Bargatze." 
and then I come out and like, and I'm like, guys, my wife's so crazy. I'm like, that's my complaints is like, <laughs> oh, you ever guys take your kids to Disney World when they're two? This guy doesn't have legs. He he's not even off the stage yet with no legs. <laughs> and like, that's it. Was just you can't brought, even use the I just car. They just for got five him. minutes. No, he has. Was it a special? It was, oh, okay. No, he yeah, he's oh. fine. Yeah, dude. There's Paul <laughs> Reed, by dude. the way. He still runs. He's faster running. There's, there's Paul uh, Reed. Oh, Paul Dennis Reed. You got to throw in the. Oh, my yeah, bad. that's that sounds whole... way more like a serial killer. All the three names. Yeah. Uh, Paul Dennis Reed. Yeah. The second you start killing people serially, he's the one that they start saying your middle. Who's my reference to Vol State? <laughs> uh, they put down. How'd you hear about us? I go watching the news in the nineties, <laughs> and just said. Oh, I'll go there. Yeah. When did you go to Vol State? Uh, ninety. When I graduated high school, in ninety-seven, so ninety-eight. Oh, you just missed him then, because he was doing his. Well, maybe he did his murders in ninety-seven. So. Oh, oh he got the de- he got the death sentence. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Anyway, so right. you were saying seventy-five grand doesn't make you happy. I don't know if I'm <laughs> that. Anyway, I mean clearly. And the lottery doesn't, yeah, people to get like, well, let's cut to, because we're going to be running out of time. We want the, I would, some of these game shows that I did find interesting was like, the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was another one that where people frauded, mm-hmm. and uh, where Guy won by having his buddy I audience cough. Have you seen it? Let's uh, oh, yeah. just play the cough. All right. <laughs> What if I told you you just need to no. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> We're gonna watch a whole ad. Alright, here we go. Oh wow, you started at the beginning here. Let me, let me get ahead to where it's Hey one. Hey, uh let me get ahead. Here. Should we explain what's going on? Alright, so this guy is. So this guy uh he went to court about this. He was having another contestant and his wife cough. Whenever he, he would read the answers out loud, like he's trying to decide, and then they would cough whenever he would say the right answer. And uh, he won the whole million. This is in Britain. And uh, You know, it's like, why didn't just the other person play the game? <laughs> the other person tried. They do the fastest finger at the yeah. beginning to try to get up there, yeah. and the other guy just didn't make it. And maybe they had a deal where this guy, if he didn't get up there, he would help him. Yeah. But uh, Can you hear the cough? Yeah, a little bit here. Wait, five minutes. Oh, there it is right there. I think he does it again here. That's now, his wife. Now, they increased the volume of the cough for yeah. this documentary. But it was just somebody right, sitting there. in the crowd. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But that's a. But this guy, he would be like about to say an answer, yeah. and then somebody would cough, and he would change his answer. Yeah. So, I mean, it's funny that you don't think that no one picked up on that. No one's like, it's so oh, obvious now. It's it's so obvious it. now. I guess you, uh, you know what? It was suspicious is he has to say all four answers. Yeah. So he's like deliberating out loud. So he's like, ah, it could be A, or it could be B. Mm-hmm. But then again, C, and then there'd be a coffee. Like, oh. <laughs> Some guys, there's a hiccup guy. <laughs> and he's like, that. Why did they, that's what they should have picked on. He's like, I'm going to do just a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. Just, I'll do it. So the, in, the, in the trial, the guy's defense was, I've had allergies and hay fever my whole life, so I've just always been a big cougher. Okay, that's fair. That's what they tend to do. All right, that makes sense. I hate, my grandmother had hay fever. Yeah. Like, when were you born, sir? Uh, the 1900s? Is hay fever still? Did they solve hay fever? <laughs> probably have that solved. That's one of the, whenever you hear a correct answer. They, they probably gave call. 75 grand to hay fever and they knocked that out. <laughs> like, that's all, that's all it cost. Uh, I don't know what hay fever is. Uh, do the other one, too. So, one of the coolest ones, I remember watching this one. This thing was, I remember, this thing was unbelievable. Uh, this guy wins, and he's, used, he's not used a lifeline at all. And then he finally uses one lifeline on the last question. Um, <laughs> I'd like to call my parents right now. Sure. Use my lifeline, call my parents. What are their names? Uh, um, my father. I'll talk to my father. Uh, hi, Dad. 
Uh, I don't really need your help. I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to win the million dollars. How awesome is that? Yeah. You really got to get it right after that. Yeah. You I know? mean, I don't think he got it wrong. That's the, no, he, he <laughs> nailed it. Uh, he's, uh, I mean, it's unbelievable. It's like, it, I, I remember watching it. Like, and this was when, I mean, he, that show was enormous. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was just so, it was like such a good, yeah, the confidence of that is crazy, but like such a cool thing to be like, you know, I mean, he's just that positive yeah. that he did it. Uh, all right. For us to wrap up, uh, what game show do you think you would be the best at? I think Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Really? Yeah. You serious? Yeah. Would Nate be one of your lifeline no. calls? No, no. Hello? <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> He'd hang up on me. Be, yeah. You know, they changed it now. But they, I think Harper wants of... to talk to you. And then he's the whole 30 seconds is like, who's this, Bob Ripples? <laughs> That's what my daughter calls. My daughter and niece, all the kids now, call Brian Bob Ripple Pants. <laughs> They made that name up, which is a great name. It is. I don't know where it came from, but Bob Ripple Pants. And then they called. That is very funny. Uh, there's no way who wants to be a millionaire. Well, right, what is it then? What's my answer? I just don't think it's... You want to know all the answers? Like That's like Jeopardy, dude. Like, you know... But the difference in Jeopardy, I wouldn't be fast enough to ever oh, bring in. Oh, that's a good point. But on here, if I can look you can at it, stall. I feel like for Jeopardy, you would realize at the end of it, you've been grabbing the wrong <laughs> remote the whole time. Like you're like, you've just been. You're like, no, dude, that's the thing that holds the pin. And you're like, ah, uh. you're like holding that pin that you have to write. You're like, dude, I was not getting anything. You're just like been the whole time. Mm. And they're like, mm. broke even, <laughs> broke even. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, what is yours, Mister Smart Guy? Yeah. What was your big? I'm not. I'm smart enough not to say the one that we have to answer questions. It would be love connection. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I. I mean, I would probably be, you know, deal or no deal. Where you're just guessing, like, wow. s- like strategically trying to guess, like, kind of stuff. It's going to be something like that. That's going to be my best chance. Pro- I mean, there's a lot of math involved in that. Well, when yeah. He's out. No, no, there's no math. You pick a... It's literally just a game of math. It's statistics, probability. He doesn't know what the show yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. But you just pick a, a case, and then but it's But you're like, picking it based on the probability that it contains a, a, a good amount of money, right? Yes. But I don't think there's no... There's no, like, strategy to it as, as much I think, as... I think there's a strategy. No, because they used to... People, you, you know, they could pick the prettiest girls or something like <laughs> Honestly, they would do. Are those people winning it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's even true. Yeah, I think you'd go on Family Feud and get in a feud with your wife while up there. Like, why did you? you, Are you you kidding me right now? Like, that's your answer? (laughs) Uh, uh, I I, I, deal or no deal? It'd be something like that. Okay, where it's not knowledge based. It's not like a yeah trivia. Yeah, I'd say, are you smarter than a fifth grader? I think that's. I think that's tough. That's a tough. I don't know. I've watched that. Sh- I watched the show when I got. I got every answer right, just playing along with it. The only way I only could, once, kids but. Jeopardy. I was pretty good at when they let kids with go the, on. The, the, like the really young kids. The really not young the, kids. Not the college kids. No, no. <laughs> it's when they let like when it's like eight year olds. Yeah, I'm like college I'm Harper. Like decent eight, hmm. and so I'm like I do pretty good. I love it. Like I'm like I always get that. So I would do good at eight year old Jeopardy. Or, or I'm saying no, I'm not going. I don't think y'all are smart enough to do what the y'all are saying. I think y'all would get crushed. Um, I, are you I smarter I, than a fifth grader? I think I would have a fighting chance on mine. I think you get crushed on who wants to be millionaire is at least a little bit of a guess. But uh, I'm pretty good at multiple choice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know that. Who would you call if you were on Who Wants to Be Here? Who would be your lifeline? Uh, could be Ryan Malone, my buddy Ryan that I grew up with. He's super, super smart. Or Felix, my neighbor, is uh, just knows a ton of stuff and is an unbelievably smart guy. Probably Felix, actually. Because he's Ryan knows a lot of stuff. Felix, is his, his business is, I think, knowing. He knows a lot of things, a lot of different things, and uh, very good at games. Uh, you know, wouldn't be anybody here. Tell you that. Uh, I'd call the guy from 
the Price is Right game that we talked about at the beginning. <laughs> he actually could be a good guy to call. Yeah. He just knows. Yeah, but he knows everything. I would, if I was on it, I would get a hold of him and say, hey, I'm about to go on this game. Can you start putting your focus into this game? And then I would, like, you know, and be like, because that kind of energy, this guy figured out Price is Right. <laughs> I think you can shove that guy in any direction of any game, and he could go. He'd be all in. And he'd be all in. And do yeah, it. he's committed. He's committed. All right. Uh, all right. Well, we did it. <laughs> we did it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, we're going to figure a way to end these better. But, you know, that was it. That was a new format. That one, you know, that was pretty good. We kind of st- stick on one topic, and yeah, I like it. That's what we're doing now. Uh, maybe it's not good, but, uh, you know what guys, these are not all going to be good. (laughs) Uh, all right. That's it for us. Thank you guys for listening. Nate land, subscribe, do all that stuff. We appreciate it. Uh, leave comments, ask questions. If you have to, we're, we're trying to get some of those. You can follow us on, uh, Bates runs all the social media on there. So make sure if you have any questions you want to ask you can send to him I keep forgetting on that. there uh, and uh, yeah that's it we'll see you uh, next time